I have found something quite incredible, and I call it the cyclic effect. I found that by improving numerous domains of your life, you end up resulting in compounding and turbocharging your entire life and increasing your success because each of these components improves other components and it all works like a cycle to turbocharge your life. Now, before you go off thinking that this is common sense, I want to show you some crazy stuff, some crazy numbers, some statistics, some scientific studies, some research, some cold hard math, and more so, I'm going to introduce you some fundamental pillars and domains that you aren't, I'm pretty sure you aren't even considering now, like meditation and other areas, and showing you the math and science behind how they have helped uh, so let's just get started. I'm very excited. Let's start with some scientific studies on charity and volunteering. This is the first domain and pillar that you should start working on. And we'll get to meditation later. <clears throat> so in the book um, Social by Matt Lieberman, they found that they could ascribe dollar values to the increase in happiness that you achieve by participating in specific charity or volunteering events. Now, I'm going to get into later why happiness, increased levels of happiness, will help increase greater levels of cognition, memory, productivity, and other perceptive areas of your life. But before we get to that, let's just convince you that if you participate in charity, it will increase your levels of happiness and well-being. So the first study found that people who volunteered once a week had the same increase in well-being as a raise from 20,000 to 75,000 a year. Another study across over 100 countries found that by giving to charity, uh, you literally doubled your salary in terms of well-being increase. Another study found that having a friend you see on most days versus not having one at all um, that you see on most days was worth an extra $100,000 a year. And finally, they found that good health and exercise, which will be another pillar and staple uh, that we'll talk about later, compared to not having good health, was equivalent to a $400,000 salary bonus. Now let's move on to further experiments and knowledge. In the book, The Happiness Advantage, it points to numerous studies on how using exercise to increase your long-term happiness can in effect increase your success in almost every other domain of your life, from marriage relationships to social skills to productivity to perception to creativity and so forth. Let's get into some specifics. A lifelong study of Catholic nuns found that the ones who are more positive in their diary entries and happy, they lived much longer and they were much healthier. Studies showed that positive emotions widen our perception, our creativity and cognition, while negative emotions narrowed our field for each of these. A University of Toronto study found that people primed to be positive before an eye tracking experiment caught almost everything while those primed to be negative missed some of the most fundamental things in that eye tracking experiment. And just as a quick reminder, again, a lot of these studies are referenced in the books I mentioned, Happiness Advantage, Social by Matt Lieberman, which will all be linked below this video for you to check out. Uh, the next study, this was across numerous different uh, experiments. So in total, in the book, The Happiness Advantage, they examined over 200 scientific studies across 275,000 people. And they found that happiness led to success in almost every domain of your life. By being happier, you had a higher positive correlation in terms of your marriage, your relationships, your health, your creativity, cancer, I mean lack of cancer, friendship, business, and so on and so forth, which is just staggering. And again, you can check out the book if you want 
further elaboration. Let's move on. I'm scrolling down to see the notes here. And finally, this effectively caused me to create what I like to call the cyclic effect. This is a strategy for you to start using the pillar techniques on each of these big categories and improving them with specific techniques, which I will share with you in detail, which will compound and help each other category. So to give you a simplistic example, by exercising and improving your health and well-being, you increase your happiness, your productivity, your energy levels. When you increase your happiness, which you can also do with happiness-inducing techniques, which I will go into detail about, you will increase other areas of your life, which I will show you right now. Those include things like uh, your social relationships, your cognition, all the things I mentioned before. Charity volunteering increases happiness even more and you do better. And uh, some people even say by, that by charity volunteering, you get business networking connections. And that leads to stuff like meditation, you know, happiness, health, all these things add to uh, better abilities to meditate. If you meditate better and you use techniques to meditate, boom, bing, I'll go into detail on all the benefits of meditation, but there's tons of biological and health benefits as well as brain benefits to meditation. And it all spirals and compounds and turbocharges on itself until you finally get back to exercise and it, it repeats like a cycle. Where, But in reality, it's more of like um, everything helping each other type of thing. So like a spider web. Anyhow, let's go into the very first thing that you can get to start doing. The first thing is exercise. Now we're going to go into some specifics, but this is one of those no brainers. You kind of already know how this works, but I want to highlight some things that are not emphasized. Cardio, not weightlifting. Based off my um, uh, courses I've taken in exercise physiology and all the things I've researched, cardiovascular exercise uh, that trains your whole body, running, jogging, cycling, swimming, versus just like isolated weightlifting of your bicep, cardio is where it's at. Do this, I don't care if it's 10 minutes a day, but do it hard for uh, 10 minutes a day, every day. And this has been proven, and there's so many studies that show this, this has been proven to increase your longevity, how long you live, uh, your well-being, your energy levels, your um, your happiness, all sorts of things. And this is one of those that's a no-brainer, so I'm going to skip past it. But it is one of the big pillar techniques that you have to start implementing. I mean, it's just common sense. You get more energy, you look better, you feel more confident, you do better with girls, girls are more attracted to you, you're more welcoming, people respect you more if you just walk in and you're jacked. You get the point. Um, but uh, honestly, again, I want to emphasize that it's not about being jacked, it's more about just health benefits. And again, uh, that a lot of the cardio exercise will not make you jacked. Uh, I do weightlifting as well, but it doesn't help you in the way as I um, am intending the cycle of the cyclic effect to work and these techniques to work. So focus on cardio, not weightlifting. Second thing, let's go to long-term happiness techniques. This is the second pillar. And this is very important as well. First off, you're already ahead of the crowd. Most people, they're just sitting on their butts and they ate McDonald's and now they feel like shit for the rest of the day. You're already way ahead of the competition. <laughs> Happiness techniques, let's get started. Again, I will just be citing a few of the key happiness studies and we'll get on our way. I mean, um, let's go. So rather than spending... Uh, uh, on materialistic things, you want to spend on experiences. You see, society believes that to bring long-term happiness, you need to spend on a bunch of things, uh, cars, a second house, uh, a new pair of shoes. Uh, some people think that getting girls will make them happy. Some people think that uh, eating a lot of expensive food will make them happy. All these things I just mentioned are under what's called the uh, hedonic adaptation principle, which essentially means that uh, we very quickly take them for granted and uh, we get used to these things and they will not make us happy. Which again, I mean, I have a ton of videos referencing a ton of clips from c celebrities, millionaires, 
business people who learn this the hard way and again I'll be talking about a lot more about that in future content so long-term happiness techniques what exactly can you do first is exercise again as I've mentioned there's a study done that showed that um, for a group of depressed patients that exercised when they went back to these patients um, six months later only nine percent of them really relapsed back into depression versus a group of people who weren't told to exercise but were given antidepressants whereas 38 percent of them relapsed after that time and uh, there's a group that did a combination of both exercise and took antidepressant drugs and 31 percent of them relapsed so exercise one savoring the good of the smallest of things when I go for a walk when I look at nature just the complexity of a leaf experiencing and savoring uh, the taste of that Popeye's fried chicken okay I, I can't eat that anymore because it, again it goes against what I've just talked about exercise good health but that's essentially important so rather than Popeye's fried chicken now it's just like um, chai tea or whatever I savor that uh, expressions of gratitude to myself and to other people um, random acts of kindness again spending money on other people connecting with old friends this could be something as simple as um, uh, calling up old friends of mine meditation again we'll get into that that's another pillar uh, using your number one strength in a new way every day so what this basically means there is a study done where they surveyed 577 people and they found a specific strength based off um, their personalities and they told each of these people I want you to use this strength in a new way every single day and six months after this experiment was finished they found that the ones who did this versus the control group who didn't they still had significantly higher extended long-lasting levels of happiness now um, there's a book called Strengths Finders 2.0 it comes with a code um, it's not free you have to pay for it but it was a $20 investment again all the links will be in uh, below this video and um, that is a online personality strengths test I took numerous times and what always came out as number one if you haven't mentioned realized from my videos and content is learner my number one strength is a learner and so I try and use that in different ways I could probably do it more but maybe one day I'll learn through books the other day I'll learn through experiences maybe I'll learn through uh, doing it in real life in a different way maybe I'll learn something new like skydiving who knows other things you can do you can spend on experiences rather than on things spend ex spend on experiences with your 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 date with your wife with your family with your parents rather than on that new pair of shoes another thing you can do is look forward to cool new activities and plan it out a study showed that by doing this it increased uh, your endorphin levels by 27 percent and th these don't have to be big things it can be small things uh, again I'm breezing through these because these studies are just there's so many of them um, again a study of 150 people found that uh, long lasting levels of happiness were created when people spent money on experiences rather than items for themselves and so again as far as the looking forward one um, that goes into following your passion and other stuff because it doesn't mean you hate you, you go to your job that you hate and then for two percent of your day that's the thing you're looking forward to that I don't think works you actually have to find a job that you at least somewhat like so um, it's it you can't use looking forward you can't use that one that says looking forward to surmount everything all these techniques have to be used in conjunction one on its own plus a faulty lifestyle can screw things over so use more than one is what I'm saying now the next thing nutrition now this is a mini pillar it's kind of back under exercise as that big pillar so we have exercise and we have happiness 
exercise is really under the pillar of good health. So nutrition is very important. What you eat, your diet, I mean, that's really what makes you healthy. Uh, they are, uh, you know the saying, six-pack abs are made in the kitchen, not at the gym. So nutrition and what you eat is also very important. And um, I just study how to eat just based off research and reading books like uh, 50 Secrets of the Longest Living People. Uh, from that book, I learned incredible things about what type of foods and uh, feelings and techniques that you should use in your day-to-day -day basis. Now for the third pillar, meditation. So let's get down into it. Studies, numerous studies have shown uh, that meditation, and again, I will link all these resources and references to the books or that reference all these studies in the description below this video. But anyhow, it has shown that meditation has dozens of positive benefits, including uh, physical structure changes in your brain in the areas related to focus and self-control, greater creativity because, uh, long story short, it helps separate the amygdala from the um, uh, frontal cerebral cortex, I believe. And what that essentially does is uh, the amygdala is responsible for emotions and fight and flight, whereas the other one, the uh, cerebral cortex, I believe, is responsible for decision-making. And therefore, when they're separated and they work uh, better separated, you're not as influenced by emotions. Also, it opens it up. Uh, so therefore, you are more creative. Um, better stress management, increased emotional intelligence, greater compassion, you feel less lonely, increased memory capacity. There's tons of benefits to meditation. So essentially, my go-to recommendation for anyone who's just starting out and being introduced to meditation is a book by Russell Simmons called uh, Success Through Stillness. And he's a very successful entrepreneur in the hip hop industry. And the book is geared towards his hip hop audience that has no uh, meditation background, uh, but they want his secrets to success. And he points straight to meditation. And so it's a very interesting book. And what's even crazier is I think meditation is very critical to a lot of people. I mean, Justin Bieber, he was interviewed by Oprah and he said that he couldn't get to sleep because each time you go to bed, he'd have 50,000 thoughts in his brain. And meditation is very good for quieting those thoughts and letting them, uh, and letting you focus. And I mean, he probably has a really hectic life, so you know how important those types of things are. And honestly, meditation is my secret sauce. It's one of my secret sauces. Having studied thousands of successful people, I found that meditation is one of those things that, guess what? A lot of successful people look to and talk about when they talk about their success. Uh, in fact, a lot of Western successful people do meditate, even though it is an Eastern practice. I mean, tons of them. From actor Robert Downey Jr. to, as I mentioned, hip-hop artist Russell Simmons, to musician Adam Levine, to the billionaire uh, money manager Ray Dalio. In fact, Ray Dalio credits it as his number one factor for success after any other for the reasons mentioned because it clears your brain so much and helps him make non-emotional decisions. And some people even say that meditation is this thing that um, when they do it or afterwards, they feel like they're, they're looking at themselves um, from above rather than like through their eyes. And I think essentially what this does and what it means um, is that it kind of separates you. It doesn't really like put you on some like higher plane in my opinion. I think it's a scientific thing where because it's um, it further separates the amygdala from the uh, cerebral cortex, it pretty much um, uh, allows uh, the frontal lobe and, and that to be separated and therefore you aren't as bound by emotional states. So for instance, there's this multimillionaire by the name of Vishen, and his last name's kind of weird, like Lakhiani or something. And he said that after he, he got into meditation, um, he, would, he would usually have huge road rage when there was traffic. But for whatever reason, now he almost, it almost felt like he was looking at himself in the car from above while he was in the car and he never had road rage anymore. So think of those things. 
let's continue. The next big pillar is social work. And I'm going to bundle this together with the last pillar, which is charity work, because uh, you can summarize these very quickly. So these are quite simple. You can volunteer once a week, ideally. Once a week is ideal based off studies, but you can do it once a month as well. Uh, somewhere where you want to help people. Uh, spend your money on others in need. Uh, strangers work really well. Face-to-face -face contact helps, not just like through a website. And it doesn't have to be a lot of money for this to work. In fact, a study was done to see if this was something where um, maybe if it was because, oh, first world country people could do this and spend that money, whereas third world country didn't. So they did it globally to see if it made an impact. And they found no matter if it was in a first world country or a third world country, even the smallest amounts donated or large amounts, they have long lasting effects on your happiness and well being. Um, and so, what other things can you do? Reconnect with old friends from your childhood via Facebook or phone and arrange an in person meeting. Make new friends, go to new social activities and add variety. Now, what these things will do, social and charity work, is these things, first off, they are techniques that add to your happiness and well being but also they create social bonds and friendships which are very important as referenced by the book Social by Matt Lieberman to create and strengthen your levels of um, uh, emotional resiliency uh, when tough times hit or stress hits as well as uh, your long-term levels of well-being which all add together. Uh, so. Those are the techniques. Of course, there's a few other small things I do, but that's basically the whole essence of why this uh, YouTube channel and my blog exists. Again, there's a lot of exclusive stuff on my blog that's only available on my blog. The link will be below this video if you want to check that out. But that's kind of the essence of my whole content. So if you want to learn more about those other things, you can check out my other content where I can go into depth, but I've covered the big major pillars to create this cyclic effect type thing. Um, but just to name a few bonus ones, um, you can play uh, mind games and challenging mathematical games or just uh, things that challenge your brain. Um, and this will help prevent Alzheimer's and keep you agile and quick even when you're old. And this is one of the reasons, the main reason why Warren Buffett, even though he's 85 years of age, is so much sharper than other people his age. Uh, when he was asked that question, that's how he answered it. And he loves to play a game called Bridge, but he also does a lot of complex, complex mathematical calculations from his business uh, because he runs one of the biz biggest businesses in the world. And he still does a lot of the math himself. So... Uh, that's how you can do it. And again, it was also mentioned in a book called 50 Secrets of the World's Longest Living People. If you look at the, the longest living ones, a lot of them played mind games. And maybe it wasn't bridge for them, but it was something else. So keep this in mind. And uh, again, all the books will be mentioned in uh, the video below, uh, the link, the description below this video. Um, I recommended these books um, because they were useful, not because of the small commission I will get. If you go to the link, which will take you to Amazon.com, and if you purchase the book. But just letting you know, if you do, I will get a small commission. Um, again, I did not reference any of these books because uh, of that fact, but because they were good books. Now, moving on, uh, just a final point. I really do think that this is a very critical thing because... Um, I found that a lot of successful entrepreneurs have voiced similar opinions, although they were anecdotal and not so much based on science. An example would be Richard Branson. He's a billionaire. And let me read you a quote from him. I'm a big believer that if you find happiness, then success will follow. Happiness encourages good life decisions, fosters wonderful relationships, and opens up doors to great opportunities. He talks about this a lot in his books. I think uh, the most in his 
the last one, the latest one he did. He's written like a ton of books. Um, the latest one he did, uh, I think it's called The Virgin Way. Uh, he talks a, a good deal about how, you know, uh, you should seek ha get happiness first and then a success will follow rather than the other way around. And I finally want to, uh, out of all the entre entrepreneurs, I, the last person I want to mention is someone called Ted Leonsis. Now, he's a billionaire and he wrote a whole book on this topic called The Business of Happiness. And the essential point of it is that he had to learn the hard way. He was super rich and he realized he was still unhappy. So you don't want to be like him or the hundreds of other people who had to learn this the hard way. And he ended up becoming very happy um, and realizing that it wasn't about these things. And he suggests like you instill happiness in your employees and that will lead to greater productivity and all this other stuff and will lead to bottom line higher levels of profits. So rather than the other way around of chasing money first and then hoping for happiness, do it the right way like Ted Leon's this. And it's really, I, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but it's really interesting seeing all these different people, uh, although through anecdotal ways rather than scientific ways, um, of finding out bits and pieces. Some Sometimes they'll never find out the whole thing, um, but they'll find out bits and pieces of figuring out happiness on their own. I mean, Russell Brand has talked about this a lot. A lot of hip-hop artists have talked about this. Back to Ted Leonsis, uh, there's a chapter in the book where he finally figures this out, uh, This one of the techniques, which is taking in the good, savoring the good. And he was he was pretty rich, and he finally figured out how to be happier. And he was sitting in the car in traffic, and he saw everyone around him honking horns, all pissed off. And he just looked at the sunset, and he was just like, man, don't people understand? Look how beautiful that sunset is. I, I mean, you could just be happy by savoring that sunset. And he called his wife, and it was a great moment. And he did it by using a scientific, I mean, it's not a scientific technique, but one of the ways of actually increasing long-term happiness, which is savoring uh, the good. So that's it in a nutshell, the cyclic effect, the cyclic technique. Uh, how can you use this in your own life? How can you get your employees, people in your business, your family members, your friends to start using elements of this to skyrocket and turbocharge their life? And... Of course, if you're a helpful person and you found this video useful, share it with someone and I will see you in the next video. Peace.